Well, that was an early and very, very busy day. Uh, the bulk of our work is done for today. I'm on my way over to the meadows. If they let me drive the first horse, I'll be there about 10 minutes before it races, and I will be there in time to drive unbeatable camp. Now, um, I was up this morning. Everybody was up this morning. The kids went to school early. Uh, we've never had, we've never tested out what time school actually starts, what time they open the doors. Uh, but at 7.25, they accepted them. It's usually around uh, five to eight we get there. Uh, so I was happy. I got to the barn 735. Um, we had a number of horses to train. I wanted to get a real, real good look at it. I guess at a number of horses. And, and to be honest, the first one to look at uh, very closely was Kings County. Now, Dr. Latessa had gone over Kings County uh, yesterday. I trained him this morning now. Uh, trained him hard. He is coming in. Uh, didn't bleed though, they scoped him and he was clean. He's coming in a little hot. I trained him this morning at 58 in a piece and he was really, really good. We changed his shoes a little bit, added some weight, I put a couple of sets of bell boots on him. He's a trotter. Get back to basics and, and ask him to trot. Um, put a couple of sets of bell boots on him and uh, also, uh, also um, knee boots, trot boots behind, gating pole on the left, two poles and a bit bur and a Murphy blind on the left. There'll be no running in today and there was not. He was very, very strong. So uh, I was more worried pulling up. Geez, did he bleed? Remember, Kings County, back when we first got him, was a bleeder. You could not train him four days before the race like this because he would bleed. So none found today, which is good. We can continue to hydrate him now and get him ready to go. We'll over him again with a fine tooth comb today and make sure that he's ready to go as he heads down to Kentucky for the summer. Memory and imagination was good. Daryl went with him. Now, I was walking up to the track as Daryl was training him. I, I wanted to see him go, and I was in between horses. Uh, I clicked my watch when I thought he when I thought he started. I thought he went a mile and 2-2. Two, two. He said he went a mile and 2-4 in a bit. But memory and imagination was very good. Very happy with him. We're just trying to get him and Arson. Jason trained Arson, I think, 2-2 two, two last half and 58 or 2-3 maybe. Um, but both those horses, again, just kind of a stiff mile for them. You don't need to do anything today harsh or strong uh, we'll come back Tuesday now they went easy those were faster miles but for them they were kind of easy we'll go back Tuesday or Wednesday in the race bike with those two and just kind of start to screw them down tight for 2024 um, purple people leader trained at a mile and a half because I trained her Saturday really hard so she'll go back again Tuesday in the race bike probably qualify next Thursday uh, Gypsy Hill and Sunny trained they trained good 2-3 last half and 1-1 one, one. Uh, Gypsy's still a little bumpy. We're going to start making some shoeing adjustments with Gypsy. See if we can't get him to a, a, a little higher comfort level in the turn. Still going to gonna almost lose him a bit. We will put him into qualify next week, but I, will, I do want to take a close look at him Tuesday. I'll probably just score him down. If, if he gets through the first turn good, he'll certainly go through the next three the same. Uh, and I still am, in, in my mind, somewhere in my mind, toying with the idea that if Gypsy, if Gypsy qualifies decent, but that I feel a, a bigger track, and I, I know bigger track would help him. I'm not opposed to the idea of maybe racing him a couple of times at Mohawk and foregoing the Hackett um, and those things. And, and I'll have a lot of my partners saying, oh, well, we got to go. We don't have to go anywhere, right? We, we just have to have race, race him in the Sire Stakes, uh, whether that be the Buckeye or the Sire Stakes. It really doesn't matter. But building his confidence is important, and that may play a role moving forward. And then last, certainly not least, no, not two of them left. Mel Gibswan trained good. Now, I'm concerned. I can hear him displacing a little bit when he's when he's breathing. So um, I believe it's stress related. There's some stressors going on with him. I trained him today in two three, but quite frankly, he's going to be a week or two weeks away. And and if I don't see him push forward in a big way, he'll be heading to Indiana for that non one as a two series rather than heading to the rather than heading to uh, Massachusetts for the uh, Bunker Hill. Um, as of right now, the only horse that I'm almost certain will be going to the Bunker Hill will be Memory and Imagination. And that's certainly nothing wrong with Mel, right? He's just understanding what he's ready to do this second and what he could be ready to do. Not ask him to do more than he needs to do right now. So the training trip today was very telling. Uh, sound, did his work well. I did have the hobbles on him. Uh, did his work well, but at the same token, I think he could be better. So we'll see how this plays out over the next two weeks. I don't think we'll qualify him next Thursday. We'll see soon. We'll qualify him soon. Um, and then JK Victory, Jason trained him today. He said, what a nice horse. Now, he's put on a ton of weight. He looks very, very good. 
Uh, Mark Adams at Winterwood did a tremendous job with him this winter. The horse come back fat, shiny, and that's not to say any of our guys. Uh, uh, Jacob always has our horses looking good. Um, Kentucky Inn or Peninsula, wherever we turn them out, they always come back looking good. That's very important. But this particular horse, J.K. Vicky, looked great when he came back in. Jason trained him and said, I'd swear he would even get around this track. Probably not going to test the waters on that one. We'll get him ready to go and send him back to his to his hometown of, uh, of Hoosier Park. Well, I guess not his hometown. Anderson. Anderson, Indiana. Uh, so that was the trainers. Now, we got all this done before 9.45 when two trips for every one of those horses before 9.45 when we were starting to warm the horses up. We had 10 in today, Born to Dance, Flash Fly, Green Tea, I'm Fancy Like, Insider Trading Mounds for All, Prince Charmer, Tactical Mounds, Sedona Hill and Sweeney. I get a little a little uh, feedback from Mr. Ziron and Megan. Megan was uh, joking about it. Scotty goes, what happened to 2-1? I said, well, you know, I was going to let her tell me what she want to do. We're getting to the quarter pole. We're on a half-mile track. She's sharp. I'm not going to pull her over backwards to keep her in a hole. I just moved her over to the front. And I let her saunter along, you know, and again, halfway down the lane, just kind of chirped her a little bit, and she was gone. She That was as easy a mile as you're going to see over that track, uh, definitely in the qualifier. She did that very, very simply. 56-2 and two last half and 57, and she felt great. Ears up, playing around, coming back after, you know, ate all her lunch, felt great. The filly is just, is just, she's just a freak. She's a very, very good mare. Now, I was excited also because her brother was qualifying. They were both winners today. Just five seconds of the difference, but they both were winners today in the, in the qualifiers. Uh, tactical mounds, one easily and handily wrapped up. Uh, mounds for all, 2-1. But off a half and 1-1, a good mile for a horse with limited exposure. And Will Strong. You always got to ask him, right? He's not going to give it up. You always got to ask him. But he did do his work very well. So both tactical mounds and mounds for all look great. Started the day with I'm fancy like. I hadn't sat behind her all year, I don't think. Not once, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe once. I don't know. Uh, uh. Put her out on the track following horse in front made a break. Of course, I'm like, look at this. Quite a way to start the day. I wheel her around. She got 28 flat in the end of it and looked really good. Very happy with her. The thing I love about all these kind of Buckeye type horses we have, keep in mind, Buckeye doesn't start for what, five weeks? We can race them in the Nomers of Two, Nomers of Two, uh, Nomers of Two, because they we can price them, right? The price on, on I fancy like in the Nomers of Three is like 50000 or something. So she can race right up in the Nomers of Two, Nomers of Four if a with a tag if we have to or otherwise right straight through into the state races where she is a Buckeye filly, but should be an effective filly. She, she, she's got a little bit of zip to her. She understands her work really well now. I like what I saw today from Insider Trip, or, yeah, from, talk about her in a minute, from I Fancy Like. Um, uh, the third set was um, Born to Dance. My God, he's a painful bugger sometimes. This horse has got talent, but what a rude, ignorant animal he can be. Dirty mouth on him, pulling log, and, you know, he just he just refuses, refuses to be polite. Now as the speed picks up in front of him, oh, then he's not going to want to fight anymore. But he did do his work today. The problem I have with him is, if he was pulling like that, I would have just looped him back to the front, but he also jumps over shadows, right? That's where the turned up shadow roll and a screen on him. He just makes life difficult. But he went out and did his work and qualified well, and he is one. He's going to start the Nomers of Two, then he's going to get priced in the Nomers of Two, and he's going to stay in there and probably race in the Iron Maiden, uh, the Iron Maiden stake closer that comes up at Northfield Park. Now, uh, he just, he, he, it, it frustrates me that he could, some days he's so good at his work, behaved wise, and other days it's just like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You're trying to deal with him, and he's just rude and not wanting to do his work right, fighting with you. He just he put you right through the ringer. And uh, my elbow still remembers him from last year. So uh, we started the day good. Three on the track, three winners. Uh, insider trading came out. Now I knew insider trading, you know. You gotta remember, everybody needs to remember, she trained down at first line on a 5.8s. She went to the Meadows on a 5.8s. 
She'd only trained down on a half the first time in her life, right now. And we took the hobbles and everything off her. All she had on today, taped her knees up because I thought she was coming a bit close to them, warming up. And it was funny, I had a, somebody asked me the other day, why do some people tape their knees up and other people wear knee boots? It's a great question. So when it comes to trotters, a uh, horse that continuously strikes your knee, obviously you're probably going to want to put knee boots on them. What happens is the surface of that knee boot is like a, a stiff plastic. And what they'll do is they'll come up, they'll hit that they'll hit that knee and then bounce off it. And the next stride is usually back up into their jack, right? Or their shin, their hind leg. So what you, what you got is um, the horses that are interfering and that first strike on that knee boot is... You know, I guess it's the chicken and the egg. Do they hit behind and then go to the knee? Do they go to the knee and then hit behind? But they usually end up working against one another, right? And you're talking about very, very tiny, uh, you know, a very, very small distance, right? You're not talking about, oh, you just turn this and turn that and they don't do it anymore. It's very difficult. Uh, the difference between interfering and hitting their boots and hitting themselves is sometimes, as you can imagine, just a fraction. So uh, what some people will do and what we will do sometimes on a horse that just maybe strikes that knee once in a while and just very lightly brushes it, we'll just tape that knee up so they don't bounce off it the same way they do with that stiff plastic boot. So what I did today was tape up inside her training's knees. And when I warmed her up, she just felt the tiniest bit shuffly. Now we took the flip-flops off her two weeks ago, went to a 916 shoe with a little borium on the toe. So just to be safe, because she's used to wearing weight, I just added a set of bell boots for today on uh, on insider trading. And we went to, uh, so some people wear brace bandages, some people wear boots. So I felt brace bandages would be fine, but just to double check to make sure she wasn't hitting, what I'll do sometimes is put a set of polo wraps on the horses behind and then vet wrap over top of the polo wraps. Now what that does is it allows me to see if the horse is striking those hind shins or anywhere else because they'll leave little nicks in the vet wrap. Now, she would never strike herself enough to injure that, to hit that leg or bruise it or anything like that, but she might do enough to pick at that vet wrap. Now, the right leg, perfectly pristine. Left leg, I saw two or three little nicks in the vet wrap. If I wanted to, I could just race her the way she was. We may opt to go back to a boot, uh, a trotting boot on her behind. So, when I looked at the program page, I saw one of the best colts from Ohio, Sam Scalacci's colt, was in there. Uh, Ty Lloyd's good trot and call. Now he's a grassroots call, but pretty honest trot, trot and call. He did very well all year. I think he made seventy four, seventy five thousand dollars last year. So he was a decent Buckeye call, right? Nice call. These two are in there. I land fourth behind Donnie Sherman's horse. Now, remember, rule one is in effect. Here's a filly that didn't spend a lot of time on a half mile track, trained down without hobbles on. Last year she wore knee boots, trotting boots with vet wrap behind, uh, Murphy blind and a head pull on one side. Uh, Martingale and a uh, Martingale and a closed bridle. This year she wears a closed bridle. That is it. Now today I added the knee tape, the knee tape and the the bell boots to her, and we bet wrapped her up rather than put bet boots on her behind. But other than that, that's all she wears. Very simply rigged filly. I didn't want to get her in a place where she puts a step in, and then what'll happen is for some of those horses that are used to the hobbles, they're used to them catching them, right? So I didn't want her to put a step in, get out of gear, lose her concentration or confidence, and roll off stride. So when we get doubled up coming to the 5 8 pole, I just said, you know, I could see the horse up front was being very green on the front. Now, I know he's a good horse, but I don't know how he's coming in. Maybe he's sick, maybe tied up, maybe there's something going on with him. I can see Sam kind of shaking the lines at him and chasing him, and I'm like, I don't want to get doubled up. I just let her sail. And if I had to come wide open, I'd clear him down the back stretch, but I didn't want to come wide open. I just wanted to let her trot. She was out there, trotted good in the last turn, did put a couple little steps in the last turn. We came out of the turn, she trotted too hard right through the wire. She's not going to spend much time on a half mile track. She looked very, very good today. I was truly impressed with, with uh, and I love this filly anyway, so really happy with her. So now we have four qualifiers in. We have three wins and a third. Not that that matters, but I'm just saying... The horses have done well uh, on this particular day. I believe one of the next ones I went with was Mounds for All, Tactical Mounds' his brother. He goes out, you know, he's always trying to dog it. I put him in gear. Uh, in the middle of the turn, I just didn't like the way everything was condensing. The two in here looked like they were looking to do something bad. The horse in the front didn't look super comfortable. The horse outside me was a little out of gear. I said, no, 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 just go forward. I went forward, dropped him in the two hole, ended up first over, he cleared down the back stretch, and actually finished off a pretty decent mile. 2-1, one, 
but I, I suspect two one would be tied pretty easy to 58 59 right now for this guy he looked really really good now if you rewind I did forget about Sweeney now Joel's gonna be asking Sweeney 7b12 Anthony you know is he just a horse I, I love Joel to death but he's always trying to downplay his horses or any horse you know do they have any raw speed do they have any this? I, and I have to I have to tell Joel I don't care about any of that all I care about is where we can situate them and if they can do well on the track. That's it. I don't care if the horse is super fast. Am I going to ever tell you that Tweeney's going to be somehow uh, get to tactical mound status? Of course not. He's an Uncle Peter Colt racing in Ohio. He's a nice Colt. Tell you what he did do. Punched a hole in his elbow today. He hadn't hit his elbows training down. Now, I will tell you this. Once he get into those elbows... It's tough to get them out. There's ways you can. We can lighten them up up front and then put the hobbles back on them. That can kind of anchor them down a little bit, possibly keep them out of his elbows. But he's been there before, and he's going to go there again. So uh, hit his elbow with no boot on, so he cut his elbow, the poor bugger, but still stayed at it and did his work. 2-2 last half in a minute, I think. Um, and again, the horses that were first, second, and third were solid, solid stake horses. So... No, no slouches in there, but good on Sweeney to muscle through it and do his work. Now, I left, and the wheels fell off. We had Flashfly, who I really wanted to go with so bad. She's a tricky filly. You know, she's she's a little funny to be around, a little funny to race, and I really wanted to go with her, and I thought I had tons of time to go with everybody, but as I looked at the math on the, because there were so many qualifiers, as I looked on the math on the board, it became clear that I wasn't, in fact, I wasn't even going to be able to go with Green Tea. We'll talk about him in a minute. But I couldn't go with Prince Charmer or Flash Fly. Apparently nobody went with <laughs> Flash Fly. Uh, Jason, had, you know, unless it, she, she, I don't know what really what went on with her. I thought she trained good the other day, but maybe we got to make some adjustments to her. She's there. She's ready to go. Do I, I don't want to put the hobbles on her, but I'll put them back on her if I have to. Um, and I didn't really get a whole lot of feedback from Jason to talk to me. And listen, I appreciate it. Jason was not feeling good today. He came to work sick, you know, warmed up, trained all the horses with me. Then he qualified the horses, stayed till the end. And because Green Tea, I remember this when you got to the qualifiers, Green Tea's never seen the start gate in his life. He never schooled before. That was him qualifying. You know, rewind back. So Prince Charmer made a break to 5 eights. I don't care. Put the hobbles on him. Get him qualified next week. No big deal, Bob's your uncle. Just put the hobbles on. It's not not the end of the world. We don't got to reinvent the wheel here. He made a break in a tight little spot, coming out of the turn into the five, past the five eighths pole. Probably ran in a little bit, touched himself, rolled off stride. No problem. Put the hobbles on him. Don't have to worry about it again. I'm not worried about Prince Charmer in the least. Uh, I know he's ready to go. Flash five was a little disappointing, but not the end of the world. We'll requalify her next week. Now, when you rewind, I was watching the clock very closely and Northfield was super accommodating they were really running them off they were about 20 minutes early is what they were and I said I'm watching I said okay we got Sedona Hill and uh, Green Tea left and I said I probably can't go with Green Tea Jason you gotta bring him into the gate slow remember he probably has never seen I'm trying to think I said I don't think he's ever seen the starting gate in his life so don't think you're just gonna put his nose on and go out there you know he can be a little rude sometimes he's still a stud but he's a worker so just let him go up into position and drive out and see how he see how he does after that. Well, that's what I did with him, right? If you look, he missed the gate by about two lengths. He was just very timid, and he's a weird little bugger. If you remember him training down, he'll come up to the start and then root his head and want to go forward. Well, when you're already started, scared of the starting gate and it takes off, and you're already itching to root your head and be rude, it's not a long walk from you know being two lengths off the gate or being on the dead run coming out of the gate. It's a very short distance between the two. So I wanted to make sure we didn't break rule number one. One of us did. One of us did not. Now, Sedona, she has been rickety training down. She was last year. Somebody said, oh, my God, I don't remember her being so rough. She's been rough behind her entire life. Her entire life, she's been that way. But she always muscled through it, and you were able to let her trot through it. It maybe looked a little more... Uh, rickety than it actually felt sitting behind the bike, but I, I didn't sit behind her. We changed her gear last week. Jason trained her 2-4. Last half of a minute, she looked good. Now, maybe between 2-4 and the 2-1 she was going to have to go in today, maybe in that short speed, that, that difference of speed, she just couldn't hold it together. So we're going to make a, a little more of a wholesale adjustment with her. She's never had the hobbles on before. She's going to try them on tomorrow and on Saturday. We'll see if we can get her squared away 
for uh, re-qualification next week. So as of right now, we do have some horses to qualify next week. Uh, Purple People Eater will qualify. I don't think we're going to go with Arson and Memory just yet. But Gypsy will qualify. Sunny might, might qualify. I skipped the horse that trained today also. I'll tell you, Brace for Landing trained very, very good. He's in to go Tuesday likely. or supposed to be in Kentucky. Trained very strong today. Very happy with him. Um, so Gypsy, Sunny, Purple People Eater. Three new ones to qualify. Then we have the Breakers. Sedona Hill, uh, Prince Charmer. They will also, and so will Flash Fly. So for sure we have six to qualify again next week and a couple other ones that are just creeping up into that qualification mode. So a good day today. It was a very, very good morning. Uh, Prince Charmer, don't worry about it with the hobbles on. He'll never run. You don't have to worry about him. Um, the other two a little more tricky. I'm going to give Flash Fly a little, I'm going to give her a wide berth. I don't want to put the hobbles back on her. I will if I have to, but I don't want to. And Sedona, I absolutely want to, and she's absolutely going to wear them before next week. So that's where we're at. 18 up, 18 down. We got them all done today. Only a couple little mistakes. Uh, Sedona Hill made a mistake. So did um, Prince Charmer. He also made a mistake. I think there was a third one, wasn't there? I'll talk to you in a minute. Decline. I'll call you back. Um, who was the third one? I just looked at it. Born to Dance was good. Flashfly made a break. Uh, Flashfly made a break. Prince Charmer made a break. And so did Sedona Hill. Those three were all qualified. And the other three shortly after that. The following week is when it starts to get really fun also. We will have uh, Memory and Imagination to qualify. And Arson to qualify the week after. Mel Gibson, I suspect, will be ready to go the week after. And then the week after that, it looks like we'll have Pickpocket back going and ready to go. And potentially and also likely Lonely Lakewood. So lots coming up, but the bulk of our sophomores are now qualified and ready to race. They'll be racing next week. Many of them at Northfield Park. They don't race next week at um, at the Meadows. So likely Northfield Park. Um, all that's left today now is Unbeatable Kemp. I'm on my way to drive Kempy. It looks like it may be our last day with Unbeatable Kemp. I'm hearing rumors and rumblings that he's going to be claimed today, which means I don't have to go to the Poconos on Tuesday and uh, I'm put up with Ollie today. <laughs> Ollie, Ollie, Ollie uh, today will Kemp uh, leaving again. What are you going to do? Anyway, um, a good day. Beautiful sunny day, but a good day at the office so far for the stable. Um, good luck to all my partners on Unbeatable Kemp. Lots more coming up the rest of the week. Take care.